This video is going to be about kinetic energy, one of the types of energy. Kinetic energy is the energy that an object has as a result of moving. If an object is moving, it can impact another object and push it a certain displacement with a certain force until it comes to a stop. Thus, because an object is moving, just that fact gives the object the ability to apply a force over a displacement, which is the ability to do work, which is energy. So as an example, if this truck is moving with a certain velocity, when it impacts this box, it can apply a certain amount of force for a certain amount of displacement. We don't know exactly what force or what displacement right now, but we know that it has that ability to apply some force for some displacement, so it must have some energy because it is moving. So the energy that an object has because it is moving is kinetic energy. The variable for kinetic energy is E subscript K, and the unit is J or joule, all energy is measured in joules. Based on this definition, if kinetic energy is based on an object's mass and velocity, how quickly it's moving, there must be an equation for the object's kinetic energy that only uses mass and velocity. So far we've only talked about energy in terms of work, force times distance, or displacement, but here, because this object is moving, because it has a certain mass and a certain velocity, there must exist some equation that can tell us exactly how much work it can do, just as a function of its mass and its velocity. So we're going to try to figure out what that is. So using this truck's mass and velocity, how can we figure out how much force it can apply for how much displacement? So I know that this object's kinetic energy is equal to the total force it can apply times the total displacement it can travel until its velocity is equal to zero, because once it's stopped, it can no longer continue to apply that force. By Newton's third law, I know that whatever force it applies to the object, the object also applies to it in the reverse direction, which seems like it's going to matter because that's affecting the truck's motion, so that's probably going to help us understand how much force it will take to make the truck come to a stop. So I know that if the truck pushes the box forward with this much force for this much displacement, the truck itself is also pushed backwards by the same force for that same amount of displacement. And here I'm assuming that that force backwards is the only force acting on the truck, Basically because these two objects are the only two things exchanging energy, I'm imagining that the force of gravity and the normal force are balancing each other out. So this force backwards on the truck is equal to m times a, the mass of the truck times the acceleration of the truck. So this is Newton's second law that's telling me that. The net force on the truck is equal to m times a. So I'm going to go back down into my equation and rewrite that kinetic energy formula as the total force times the total displacement the truck can apply in terms of this new equation for the force that I have. So because that force on the truck is pointing in the opposite direction of the displacement, I'm going to consider the acceleration that it creates to be negative if the displacement is positive. So I'm going to call that m times negative a times s. I'm going to refer back to one of the kinematics equations, v squared equals u squared plus 2as, because I now have information about s and a, and I also know information about the final velocity of the truck. The final velocity of the truck here is zero. So I can rewrite this equation like this. If I rearrange the equation like this, I want to know information about the starting velocity of the truck and the mass. My ultimate goal is to get an equation for kinetic energy that just uses mass and the starting velocity of the truck, because those should be the only two things that are giving it energy if kinetic energy is really just based on how fast a certain object is moving, is the initial velocity and the mass. So solving this for initial velocity gets me that the initial velocity is equal to negative 2 times a times the displacement. So that means that negative a times s is equal to 1 half u squared. So it can actually take negative a s in my equation for kinetic energy and replace it with 1 half times the initial velocity squared, like this. And when I do that, I actually get the equation for kinetic energy as it's used in physics. So the kinetic energy that an object has, the total amount of work it can apply on another object as a result of moving, is equal to 1 half times its mass times its velocity squared. That's normally written as v rather than u because it's not normally considered to be an initial or final velocity, it's just the velocity that an object is moving with. So the equation is 1 half times m times v squared because as you saw in the proof, that's the exact amount of work, the force times the displacement, that the object can apply as a result of its mass and velocity. I'll do a few examples here just to show you how to use the kinetic energy equation. A 1000 kilogram truck moves at 20 meters per second. What is the truck's kinetic energy? 
So I can see that I'm given the mass and the velocity. The mass is 1,000 and the velocity is 20 meters per second. And the equation is 1 half mv squared. So just plugging these in, I get 1 half times 1,000 times 20 squared, which when I multiply that out is equal to 200,000 joules. Students are often a little thrown off by the numbers involved in energy. They'll get numbers this big and assume that it's too much. Just for context, one joule is about the amount of energy that it takes to lift one apple by about one foot. So if you think about it, if you have a thousand kilogram truck going at 20 meters per second and it impacted like a gigantic pile of apples, it could probably move a lot of them a lot, basically. So one joule is really not very much energy if that's a helpful way of thinking about it. So 200,000 joules definitely makes sense for this problem. Here's another example of problem that combines work and kinetic energy. A thousand kilogram truck moves at 10 meters per second when it collides with a large box. After it pushes the box five meters, the truck is moving at five meters per second. What is the average force the truck puts on the box? So I have the mass of the truck, the initial velocity of the truck, and the final velocity of the truck, and the displacement that the truck pushes the box. So using this information, I can find that the kinetic energy that the truck starts with is 50,000 joules, plugging in those numbers. And the final kinetic energy with the final velocity is 12,500 joules. So that means that the change in energy is negative 37,500 joules. And if you remember, the change in energy is equal to the work done by the truck. In this case, it's the truck doing the work. It's giving its energy to this other object. So that means that it's doing 37,500 joules of work on this other object. So I know that this other object is experiencing that much work, um, and that's equal to the force it experiences times the displacement, and the displacement of the object is 5 meters. So that means that the average force that the object experiences as the truck is slowed down is 7,500 newtons. So that's a connection between kinetic energy and work. Just one important note, um, energy is a scalar, and kinetic energy is also a scalar, which means it can never be negative. It has size but no direction, so just observe how this is different from momentum. If I calculate the momentum of these two objects, one is positive and one is negative, but when I calculate the kinetic energies, they're both positive. This actually makes sense, because if we're considering one velocity to be positive and the other velocity to be negative, the squared velocity in the kinetic energy equation actually gets rid of that negative sign. So the kinetic energy is always going to be positive regardless of what direction the object is moving. So that's one way it's different from momentum. So here you'll notice that the total momentum is 11 newton seconds and the total kinetic energy is 53.5 joules. So the momentums are working against each other, but the kinetic energies are adding together. One last thing to note, because kinetic energy and momentum both only depend on mass and velocity, we can actually write an equation for one in terms of the other. So this is actually given to you on your IB test booklet. The kinetic energy is equal to the momentum squared over two times the mass. It's pretty easy to prove this if you're given the equation for momentum mass times velocity. This is going to be very important when we start to talk about collisions involving both kinetic energy and momentum later on in the unit. So that's it. That's the definition of kinetic energy and the equation for kinetic energy.